Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video first we're gonna talk about Hassan Mustafa who just won Puerto Rico Pro and brought his absolute best conditioning that we ever saw and we didn't know who was responsible for this I mean his previous coach was Chris Asito and this year we didn't hear anything from anybody we didn't know but now he revealed it and it was AJ Sims also known as Cement Factory so as you can see in this post right here Hassan reveals who is his coach and he says Cement Factory is the man behind it all Thank you so much coach for bringing me to a whole new level This is only the beginning and although we won the first pro show We have a lot left to do to be our absolute best at the Olympia So now you know it is AJ Sims who is also a previous coach for Justin Rodriguez Who brought Justin in some of the best packages we ever saw him so far He made so much progress in the past couple of years with AJ but they messed it up for New York and for Indy and uh, Justin wasn't happy about it so he changed a coach after that show actually from what I heard he was being coached by AJ for I believe for Indy and for New York but he didn't really listen to him he didn't do what he was telling him and uh, I mean I believe he didn't bring his best because he was already very tired he competed so much in the past year or two so he probably needed a break but for some reason he, he thought that it was uh, AJ Sims fault and he stopped working with him and uh, he hired the coach who was coached the guy who won Indy and who won New York of course it is George Farah who is coaching Blessing of Audi but we'll see if uh, Justin is gonna have more success with George Farah I don't know what exactly happened between these two guys but if the reason was the fact that they failed for two shows Indy and New York I don't think Justin should have stopped working with AJ AJ is a great coach obviously and he started to learn Justin's body they had a lot of success, you're watching right now his Boston Pro Edition where he was at his biggest and at his hardest and he improved so much on his quads and his shoulders As some would say, myself included, that it's mainly Sintel oil but whatever it is, it's not that obvious, it's a little suspicious but it's not exactly obvious and yeah, I know he doesn't have the best aesthetics I mean, he has very horrible aesthetics but as far as like size and conditioning and peaking, right, you know, being as dry, as full as hard as possible he was on point with AJ every time he got him to be eighth the Mr. Olympia in a very competitive lineup he got him to be a second after William Bonac at that Boston Pro and he was almost top three at the Arnold Classic he was watery at that show but at Boston Pro he was really good as you can see right here he was spot on I mean for a big guy for a mass monster and that's something Justin needs to be he is not exactly streamlined physique he's not like a Cedric McMillan type of physique he is like a Branch Warren kind of physique he needs a lot of muscle he needs great conditioning he needs to peak right and from what I saw he had a lot of success with AJ but he decided to stop working with him it seems like AJ wasn't exactly super happy about this he didn't really say too much he didn't say what he probably meant but he posted this album of photos uh, it is photos of Justin and uh, he says back over the years working with Justin had a great run when everything was aligned with communication and work a lot of great looks and he had some fun traveling to the shows with him and assisting him wish him the best in his journey and with his new coach and his career in bodybuilding so he didn't really say too much but he also said a lot in the same time if you know a little bit of a backstory now back to Hassan as you can see he, he brought Hassan's best look ever I mean Hassan was previously working with Chris Asito who is arguably the best coach in the world many would put him in that first spot he is definitely one of the top five coaches by name at least and uh, Chris Asita couldn't do it he couldn't crack Hassan he couldn't figure out why Hassan can't be conditioned and so Hassan changes a coach and he brings his absolute best ever why was he keeping this under wraps we don't really know but there was a live uh, on uh, AJ Sims uh, Instagram I watched it I didn't film it unfortunately but I can tell you what was uh, what was it about it was actually a Q&A and somebody asked uh, AJ why was he keeping this under wraps why didn't he say that he was his coach and he simply said that it was about uh, Hassan he didn't want to steal the spotlight and he works better when he's not under pressure when nobody knows 
that he's coaching him. So that was basically it. And somebody also asked why Chris Asito couldn't crack Hassan, why he never brought him in condition. And AJ's response was he doesn't know what uh, Chris Asito and Hassan were doing before. But whatever it was, it doesn't matter. Now these two guys have the winning formula. I hope they will figure out how to bring him fuller and bigger, as big as he was before, but still conditioned. I believe that is possible. I don't think Hassan needs to be downsized to be more conditioned. I think he can be just as big as he was before and look even bigger on stage because under those bright lights, when you are the most conditioned and the fullest and like if you pick the best, you're gonna look the best. I mean, bodybuilding is an illusion. Of course, you're not gonna be as heavy, but sometimes leaner means looking bigger on stage. So I think, I hope, and I believe these two guys will figure it out. And at the Mr. Olympia, Hassan is going to be bigger and let's say as conditioned, if not even more conditioned, and that's gonna be a serious package. And I'm looking forward to seeing that. At least now we know AJ Sims is coaching Hassan. Before we keep going guys, I just want to tell you about the Vintage Blast, it is a product by the old school labs, it is a pre-workout, it's not just an ordinary pre-workout, it is probably the most delicious pre-workout that you can find out there, and it also works so, so well, it gives me the best pumps, the best focus, I'm feeling really strong in the gym, it completely changed my off-season this year, and I I'm suggesting you guys to try it, if you want to support me and my channel, give it a try, just use the link in the description of this video and use the code EVEN for a 12% discount. Let's go now, guys. Marcelo D'Angelis, aka Horse MD, is out of the hospital. I don't know why is there a flaster on his belly button. I mean, he did say that he had food poisoning and he was in the hospital for a while, vomiting and you know, stuff like that. He probably was dehydrated, maybe he had some IV, but uh, I, I don't know what is the reason for that flaster on his belly button. Maybe he will explain. Anyways, this is him, this is what he looks like right now. And finally, he looks like an actual classic competitor. Is this a good thing? Well, no, it's not. I mean, before, he did not look like a classic physical competitor. He looked like a bodybuilder, and he is a bodybuilder. He, he turned pro in bodybuilding uh, actually last year only. It's not like he turned pro in bodybuilding 10 years ago and he lost all the muscle. No, he just turned pro in bodybuilding and he decided to do the classic physique because he can make the weight. And it was insane. We were looking at his photos and we were thinking, how, how is this possible? I mean, he was close to the weight cap. He needed to lose like 10 pounds, something like that. And he was almost there. But now, as he said, he lost a lot of weight. So probably right now he's under the weight cap and he still looks big. He still looks great. I still think he should compete as soon as possible. And look, I mean, for like a week out of gym and not eating, you can't really lose that much muscle. I mean, yes, you're gonna deflate a little, you're gonna lose some glycogen, you're gonna lose some water from that muscle, you're gonna lose uh, the fullness, you're gonna look smaller, you're gonna feel weaker, you're gonna be weaker, but you don't really lose muscle that fast, no. So the thing he needs to do right now is to just get back to his old routine and in a week or two he'll be back where he was at and if he, if he can't do the show that he was originally planning, there is a lot of other shows, man. He can choose whichever one he wants in the next month or maybe a little bit more. He still has time to prep to look good. Uh, here he doesn't look bad. I mean, his conditioning is good. He looks a little bit uh, flatter, smaller, but... No, he does not look small. I mean, he looks like an average classic physique Olympian, let's say. Before, when he was full-blown, he looked like, a, like an open bodybuilder, like a transition between classic and open bodybuilding. Something like Rafael Brandao, maybe a little bit smaller than that. That's what he looked like. And now he looks like an actual classic physique guy. He just lost some fullness, you know. He looks flatter, but that's about it. As soon as he gets back to his routine in a, in a week or two, three weeks max, he's going to be as big as full as he was before, and if he can actually make the weight, he should definitely do the classic, uh, he does look amazing as far as uh, lines, as far as shape, as far as conditioning also, he's going to be, he's going to be ready, you know, in a, in a couple of weeks, so there is no point of stopping this prep, there is no reason to stop this prep, he looks great, and I hope we will see him this year on that stage in classic physique, what do you guys think? All right, next we have a little bit of an update of Kevin Levroni. So since the last time he competed, we didn't really know what he was doing. I mean, he, he usually, when he's not really focused on competition, 
He usually doesn't live bodybuilding lifestyle. He doesn't like to do that. He lives like an ordinary person. He doesn't work out. He doesn't follow a specific diet. He does whatever the hell he wants, whatever he enjoys. And that is not bodybuilding. He does other things. And this is the kind of transformation that he makes. So in four months before the show, he starts prepping and he grows into the show. He gets conditioned. He gets bigger. He gets back to what he was before. The muscle memory kicks in. And this is the way he used to do things before uh, in the in the off season. He sometimes wouldn't even look like he, he works out. You know, he would go with his band. He would play the drums, whatever he was doing. You know, he, he would completely relax, lose so much size, so much weight. He would look like uh, like somebody who works out sometimes occasionally, maybe does some push-ups, maybe jogs in the morning, but that's about it. He never looked like a freak monster bodybuilder, except for when he was prepping for the stage. And even in 2016, when he made his comeback, he hasn't been training or doing anything remotely related to bodybuilding for 14 years before that. And this is what he looked like uh, in his prep for that comeback. Insane, right? And now we have no idea what his future plans are as far as competition. We didn't see anything from him lately as far as physique, physique updates. But in some of his photos, through clothes, we can kind of see that he didn't exactly lose all of his muscle. He still has some, some arms, you know, he can still see some shoulders. So he probably kept training occasionally, maybe eating a little bit more than usual. He is probably on TRT at least a little bit of test and maybe some GH, I don't know. But we haven't really seen any updates. We were wondering what he was doing. Is he going to do the Masters Olympia? What's he doing right now? What he's looking like? And we don't really have a physique update, a proper one, but we have a little bit of it. We have a video that he posted, him in sauna, and uh, as you can see, he still does have some muscle. Look at the pack right there, look at the delt, and look at the, the bicep, and look at the veins. When you are in sauna, your veins blow out like crazy, but still you can see the muscle. Look at the biceps, look at the triceps, look at the forearms. He still has some muscle, he did not lose everything. And I don't think he would maintain this kind of physique at 58 years of age without some training, some drugs and some quality food. So as you can see, he does have some muscle still. He does have pretty good condition. You can see veins everywhere. You can see that his skin looks pretty thin, so he's in a good condition. Could he come back uh, for, a, for a Masters Olympia? I don't think he would do well. I don't think Masters Olympia is going to be for the retired open pros. I think it is for the new guys who never really made any success when they were younger, but still somehow they managed to maintain a lot of muscle. Look at Danny Hester, for example. He was doing bodybuilding since the 90s. He was never able to compete against the open pros, but he never gave up. And at the age of 46, I believe, they created the classic physique division and it was a perfect fit for him. So at the age of 46, he became the Mr. Olympia. And I believe there are so many, I actually know for a fact, that there are so many other great bodybuilders bodybuilders who are a little bit older who still look absolutely insane and they can beat the majority of the younger guys but not all of them not at the mr olympia level and i think mr olympia is going to be reserved for those guys not the likes of kevin levroni but does kevin levroni look good right now hell yeah especially considering that he has no shows in plan look at the biceps look at the triceps the conditioning look at the pecs he still has muscle, he did not let go of himself completely, he's probably still trying to stay as muscular as possible, and he's, he's succeeding in that. Alright, and we also have a mass monster under construction. This is Samson Dowd, as you can see, he made this post, this uh, story actually, uh, in which he updates us about his weight. So as you can see, he is officially the heaviest he has ever been at 143 kilos or 315 pounds. Man, that is some serious weight. That is really heavy. And especially because he's not really that tall. I mean, he might seem a little bit taller than he actually is. He does have some really nice proportions, uh, nice, nice aesthetics, you know, nice shape. The length of his limbs and everything just flows so well. He reminds many people, myself included, of Flex Wheeler a little bit. Uh, and uh, he's five foot eleven, so he's not short, but he's not tall by any means. He's not six foot. He's not six foot one. He is five eleven, and obviously three hundred and fifteen pounds, which is heavy, which is really big. Uh, he is still coached by Milos Sharchev, so hopefully they will bring his mass up to the, to the highest level possible, and uh, hopefully he will be conditioned. 
as well as he needs to be and hopefully he will improve some of his weaknesses like his back and that's probably it. back and i would say maybe a little bit of uh, shoulders maybe arms but like his legs are insane he also needs to get his um, glutes a little bit more conditioned and if he fixes all these things who can stop him really like this is this is we are talking about the top six mr olympic competitor he was fourth at the arnold classic this was sort of his breakthrough year and um, he's not stopping anytime soon uh, i don't know if he's gonna do the mr olympia this year i don't know if he's qualified or not if you guys know maybe he qualified by winning some of the post olympia shows last year if you guys know let me know in the comment section down below but if he actually competes this year i think he's going to make some serious damage in that lineup because he is making some serious gains in this offseason anyways guys that's gonna do it for this video if you enjoyed it give it a thumbs up and for more videos like this subscribe to my channel guys thank you so much for watching all the best and bye bye